We're talking about the single market as, as if it's something new. Um, I'd like to know how effective you feel the single market is right now. In terms of wholesale financial services, we've come quite far, and the crisis has taken us further, as I mentioned. However, there's still work to be done. <clears throat> Some examples that are current e-signatures, which allow people to move from paper to electronic banking, uh, portable cross-border pensions, um, and then blue card work permits for non-EU nationals working in the EU. EU are just some examples that will, will assist. But as John was saying, retail financial services has got a lot further to go. On the broader topic of services, my sense is not nearly as far. Um, if you look at 70% uh, of, of EU GDP is service-related, about 20% of it crosses borders. Um, OECD reports say that services is half as efficient here as in the United States. If you look at what happened in Sweden in terms of the deregulation of services, indeed in the US, they're significant drivers of productivity, so probably they're much further to go. I think the big issue is the, the damage that's been done to the citizen the citizens' confidence. I don't think that the regulators have any idea what's going on in these big corporations. And I have to say that I would rather see smaller entities that we can control, albeit in a single market. I think uh, there is a real issue, and it's probably best illustrated by the fact that now a, large, a number of large multinational corporations have a better credit rating than a very large number of governments. They can borrow when governments can't. And that's a, something that wasn't the case even two or three years ago. It's a, it, it, we're seeing, if you, if you like, uh, the growth of the, of the inter multinational corporation in terms of its, its capacity to influence events. Um, now, on the other hand, they are regulators. I mean, there are very, very detailed requirements about how they structure their boards and how they set compensation and all sorts of things like that. They're not you know, running, running free in the world. But it's not something that's being debated in the public space. There isn't really an understanding. I mean, I would say, as you know, somebody who's worked in this country, and this country is probably, both parts of it, have attracted more multinational investment than most parts of the world have done. You know, we have done very well with multinationals. Multinationals pay their people well. They tend to retain them rather than let them go, um, probably better than some SMEs. So, I mean, our experience has not been bad, but there isn't quite the same face-to-face -face relationship with them. Uh, there isn't quite the same humanity in the relationship. And that is a problem. Um, I'm not so sure what the answer to it is. Large companies will become large, whether we have a single market or not. Precisely as you say, they're capable of dealing with cross-frontier things. And in fact, the growth of multinationals is probably one of the main political reasons for the growth of European, economic, or European political integration. Because by and large, most national governments find it very difficult to deal on a, a fair field basis with large multinationals, whereas a much larger organisation such as the EU would find it easier to regulate them, control them in a way that's desirable from an economic growth point of view. So in a sense, what we actually need is an integrated Europe to deal with the very fact that companies are getting larger in the world. Do you think that the European Patent Office is sufficient to guarantee the TRIPS, the trade-related intellectual property rights, on the European level for the single market, or do we need a more flexible system? That again shows up the difficulties, doesn't it? That we as Europeans look with tears in our eyes at the world trade negotiations and almost wonder why can't they just adopt our reasonable position? Whereas lots on the other side in the developing countries see that what we're looking for in intellectual property pr protection effectively as a continuation of economic dominance and supremacy. And they would argue that no, that's totally inappropriate. So we don't agree throughout the world as to what the appropriate protection for intellectual property is. And the same way with lots of things throughout Europe. We haven't yet agreed on lots of things. And we can only move forward, even in national economies, we can only move forward in terms of agreement on particular issues. So I would think that the days when anybody, even within a national government, or particularly within the EU, that someone can say, this is the way we're going to do it, because we have looked into our heart and it's the right way to go, that's not going to work. 
We have to bring people along, we have to persuade them, and that means we have to come to a common position. Music